I would love to say that Insight Dialogue began uh, as a vision, like heaven caught on fire and I just realized this great insight and I had to share it. It was, it was really much more uh, informal and uh, not quite accidental, but just circumstances coming together in the way life does sometime. Uh, I was actually uh, working with a colleague in a PhD program, a woman named Terry O'Fallon, and um, we both became interested in the practice of dialogue, and dialogue especially online, uh, because it, even though it was the early 90s and there was no World Wide Web, there was still a real interest in um, uh, how we could communicate through the network in a sincere, deep way. And um, at the same time, I was teaching her Vipassana meditation. Of course, I was just teaching elsewhere as well. But when we practiced in dialogue, we both realized as the meditative element came in that something quite, there was a kind of a shift. And um, it was the following of that first fragrance of the practice that was the, um, that was the birth of it. Um, so we worked on this together for a couple of years. We actually did our PhD work together on this. Uh, it was a wonderful relationship. She's a beautiful, intelligent, spiritual person. It was a real privilege to work with her. Um, I then developed that further after we had worked together into group practice and then especially retreat practice. And it was when it came together with my background with pretty rigorous Vipassana retreat, bringing it into the relational, that uh, something really astonishing began to happen. Um, this later fed back out to the group practice and even some of the work we're now doing online with Skype and other you know, ways of communicating over the network. But in the retreats, uh, it was taking a traditional retreat format, you know, waking up early, silent meditation, noble silence throughout the retreat, and, but then having inside dialogue much of the morning, much of the afternoon, maybe some in the evening, but with Dhamma talks and with um, teacher interviews and with a continuity of practice from the early morning till, till night. Bringing that together with the relational practice was uh, uh, brought about something of, of, of a power that I just absolutely had no idea was uh, going to come forward. So there's no way that I predicted this. I'm not that smart. It's just something that had to emerge from experience. And it did, and it still does. It hasn't stopped. I'm still learning all the time. Um, but what happened over the first, oh, maybe five or ten years of developing the work is the meditation instructions, the guidelines, uh, became very uh, clear and developed uh, sort of their own layers of wisdom that were in there, and I didn't even know all that was in there. It sort of revealed itself over the, over the period of practice, over the course of years. And then bringing it together with the, with the Dhamma, with real essential wisdom, uh, putting that together into a relational practice was, uh, uh, something that formed rather than just my thinking of it and creating it, right? That's the point. And then what that did is that turned back around and began to teach me about the Dhamma. So I actually began to uh, understand traditional Dhamma more deeply because of my experiences in the relational practice. Um, and my actual traditional silent meditation practice 
also got deeper and deeper. And this is what I see with people on retreats all the time. They say, oh, thank you so much for this. I've, you know, I've, I've now reestablished my, my traditional practice, you know. Um, and, or they say, I've been introduced to the Dhamma in a way that is really alive, that's really come alive for me. And um, uh, that's how it feels for me, is that this proto-Buddhism, this essential um, teachings, have really um, mm, blossomed uh, in my heart out of this work. 